Hello. This lecture will cover pages 219 through 229 of my lecture notes. Please print those pages out and have them in front of you as I present this lecture on chapter 12K, Bodhi Plots, examples 7 through 9. This, uh, this lecture is just going to cover briefly examples 7 through 9. We're not going to go through them in detail. Um, you're responsible for them. Uh, I'd like you to try to work them out on your own. But let's take a look at them starting on page 219. Draw the Bode plots, both the magnitude and phase, on semi-log paper for the following transfer function. And here I have the transfer function. Obviously, it's in a break frequency form. The K0 term you have to figure out. So I'd like you to go ahead and, and try to do this example number seven completely on your own. Stop the video. And uh, then here's my solution. On example uh, number seven on page 220, sort of difficult to read, but notice I had to get it in a standard form. My standard form was 10 times the quantity S over 200 plus one divided by S over 20 plus one. My K0 constant was a 10. There's no single S term, so my dB is 20 dB. First break frequency was 20 radians per second. It was a pull. My second break frequency was 200 radians per second. It was a zero. So there's my Bode plot coming in on a constant 20 dB, no slope. I get to my break frequency at 20. It's a pull. I break down at 20 dB per decade until I hit 200. At 200, my zero kicks in, which takes out the pull, and I get back to a plus one. My phase plot looked like this. I had a zero phase. I got pretty close to maybe minus 70, minus 65. And then I broke back up to zero. Started at zero, ended at zero. A real, a real quick check to see if I end up at zero. Because I have S term in the numerator, I have an S term in the denominator. As S dominates both, I get an S over S, which cancel, I get back to one at no angle. Example number eight. Draw the Bode plots, both magnitude and phase, on semi-log paper for the following transfer function. Here I have another transfer function. There's no single S terms. So you shouldn't have any trouble doing this. These are more, more like the exam problems. I just want to give you more practice. So make sure you can do example at least uh, through the first eight examples or so. Transfer function is 100 times the quantity S plus 5 over S plus 100. K0 term is not 100. This is in a break frequency form. I have to get a 1 here and have to get a 1 here to get it in the time constant form where I can extract the break frequency. So make sure you get that in a standard form. I want you to do your magnitude plot very carefully. Do your phase plot on another piece of paper and see if you get these answers. I transferred everything over to here. My transfer function turns out to be 5 over s times the quantity s over 5 plus 1 divided by s over 100 plus 1. There's no single s terms. My k0 is a 5, which leads to 14 dB. A plus 14 dB is a constant. Mega 1, my first break frequency is at 5 radians per second. It's a 0, which breaks up. My second break frequency is 100 radians per second. It's a pull. It breaks down. So I laid out my scale this way. I put my 10 radians per second, second division in. There's my point five. Or there's my 5. For my zero break, and there's my 100. It fell right on a unity section up here, so I didn't have to write anything in between the, the sections here. So I have 100 here. So if you take a look, I'm coming in here at a constant dB, 14 dB. I don't start at zero. I'm at 14 dB here. So I'm at 14 dB coming in. I hit the break. I go 20 dB per decade. Make sure I put my markers in there to get my slope. And 
and then at at 100 radians per second, my zero hits. Take it back to zero. That's the shape of the curve, magnitude plot. My phase plot looks like this. Starts at zero, makes it almost a plus 90, comes back to zero. If you take a look, do I end up back at zero? Well. Let's take a look. Here's my transfer function down here. S term dominates the numerator and denominator as j omega, as omega goes to infinity. I have S over S. That's one at an angle of zero degrees. So yeah, it goes back to zero because the S terms cancel. And I go back to zero here. Example number nine. I think this is the last example you get in the course here. So draw the Bode plot, both magnitude and phase on semi-log paper for the following transfer function. I wanted to show you example of a second order system here. Now, what's coming up with this system is you know, resistors in multiple active, multiple capacitor, capacitors in the in the circuit, not a single capacitor. So we have multiple time constants here. And notice the transfer function. I didn't give you the circuit. I'm not going to give you a circuit this complex, maybe another course. But you take the circuit and you analyze it, and this is what you get for a transfer function once you let j omega equal s. I want you to notice that denominator. That denominator was factored. You're going to end up, what you're going to start with is the denominator looking like s times the quantity s squared plus 150s plus 5,000. Well, oh, we, we haven't had, that's, that's, that's case four. We didn't do the quadratics, remember? But I wanted you to see in this example that if I would have started with this, if I'd have told you ts is equal to this, certain quadratics you can handle. If you can factor that, down to this you should be able to go from here to here and you should be able to handle this even though it is a quadratic originally here even though it was a quadratic originally here if you factorable it just adds two breaks two more pulls not one pull so a pull would 50 radians per second and a pull at 100 radians per second that's what this does here so here's your transfer function, and I went ahead and I come up with my K0dB using, but you, you can't use this now. This is a single S term in the denominator. So you have to use this, 100, this 250 in that one formula that had a, a single pull at the origin. And I did that. And I come up with this. I transferred, I put my transfer function over here on my, on my semi-log paper. There it is. And I worked from this. And where did I start here? I tried to find my 0 dB intercept. I had to work at my 0 dB intercept. So I want you to go ahead and take a look at this. See if you can come up with your 0 dB intercept. And then I had a single pull at the origin. At omega equals 0. So it's breaking down. And if I take 20 times the log of 250, I get 48 dB. And that checks with my radian equal one second. But I had to get this slope in here first, so I needed two points to get this slope. I got one point at my zero dB. At my zero dB. And I got another point. And I got my rule off here. That roll off is minus 20 dB per decade. Let me take a look. I might have tackled this. I might have tackled this problem a little bit different. 
you can work this problem exactly the way I showed you in the in my lecture but I made a tackle tackled it a little bit different to get some of these points here but that's the shape of that curve and these points are valid points so you should be getting a equivalent looking shape to the Bode plot for this example number nine because if you take a look you're coming in at minus 20 dB per decade until you get to that first break well that first break is going to be at 50 when you get to 50 you're going to start rolling down at minus 40 dB per decade well that's not going to go for very long until you get to 100 when you get to 100 you're going to roll off at minus 60 dB per decade because you don't only have the single S term roll on you but you have then a 50 you get another pull and then a 100 you get another pull so you're, you're from 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 100 radians per second and higher from 100 radians per second you're rolling off at minus 60 dB per decade because of these three here and it isn't until you hit 500 out here that this zero takes effect and it takes one of these three breaks out and you get back to minus 40 dB per decade now I'm not going to give you anything like this on the exam at least not in its entirety but you should be able to see the minus 20 dB per decade at this section and the minus 40 dB per section per decade at this section and the minus 60 dB per decade at this section and back to your minus 40 dB per decade at this section low pass filter that really starts rolling off out here and then finally the phase I plotted the phase for each one of these that's what the dotted lines represent in on my graph and it, the copy is not very good here but it gives you an idea and my X's represent points of the of the individual terms that I use to plot notice that single S term gives me a minus gives me a, a, a minus 90 that's a minus 90 here gives me a minus 90 all the time so that's my starting point minus 90 and then I get a composite on each one of these and I have to put points in I add them up algebraically put a points in and I see it comes down here almost to a minus 225 and I settle back out at minus 180 so when I when, I'm, when all the influence by all the breaks is done with I'm at that frequency and above I'm minus 180 degrees that's a minus 180 degrees down there well let's check to see if we end up at minus 180 I go back to my original transfer function and if I let s dominate here I get s I get s over s to the third s times s times s on the denominator that's simply equal to 1 over s squared which is 1 over s times s and each one of these represent 90 degrees each one of these represent 90 degrees j omega don't forget that's 180 degrees I bring it to the top because that's what I'm that's how I represent the angle of the transfer function I have to bring it to the top here I get minus 180 degrees at omega equal infinity and if I take a look at my curve and omega goes to infinity I'm at 180 degrees minus 180 degrees so it checks on page number uh, 228 for the exam I want you to look over some problems eat 1221 and eat 1222 in the textbook and let me some of you don't have that textbook handy so let me go ahead and show you what these look like they look like this right here it says given the network below sketch the Bode plot for the gain and phase of that circuit well we did something very close to it but you know what type of filter is it can you look at that and tell me what type of filter that is is it a, a high pass filter or a low pass filter you should be able to based on the high frequencies this looks like a short and at the low frequencies it looks like an open circuit so you, you can get the response to that real quick 
Here's example 1222, which I referred to at the top. Sketch the network below. They're given the network below. Sketch the Bode plots for the gain and phase of this circuit. And what type of filter is this? Example number 10 is simple bandpass filter. How do they come up with a bandpass filter? Well, find the transfer function T of S and sketch just the magnitude plot for this second order system. We just want you to do the magnitude plot for this second order system. Well, let me take a look at my book here real quick. Let me grab my textbook. Let's see what I'm referring to there on page number of 529. Nine to make sure you guys have this. See if that's an example problem that sets this up. Five twenty-nine. No, that's this problem right here. That's this problem. So nothing new. Now look. Here's the answers. All you have to do is come up with the magnitude plot. And this will factor right here. This factors. So if you use your algebra and you remember what this is, what the inductive reactance is here, it's X sub L. What's the capacitive reactance here? It's X sub C. And we know this is R. We know that the inductive reactance up here is J omega L. Remember that? That's the, that's the inductive reactance. And since J omega is S, this is simply equal to LS. In the and the capacitor reactance is 1 over J omega C. And that's simply going to be equal to 1 over Cs. So to get you started on this transfer function, it's going to be R divided by this plus this plus this. It's the voltage divider rule, remember? That's the transfer function of that circuit. I think you can see all I did here is multiplied through by CS. CS, 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 and I'm down to here. This is not heavy duty math. I went from this circuit and I get down to here. Well, now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and get this cleaned up with a single S. I want a single, I want a one out here, so I can factor this. So I divided through by LC. I put in my actual values, and here's my starting point transfer function right there before I do my magnitude Bode plot. You just have to factor this. It gives you a single S term in the numerator at the origin. That's a zero. And it gives you two pulls in the denominator. It factors like this. Some value here. I'm going to call it break one. Uh, here's break one. Break one is that S is equal to zero. So let's make that break two. S plus break three. So you're finding break two and break three up here. Get the standard form. Get your K zero and your you're off and running on that problem. And that's a bandpass filter. In order to get a bandpass filter where you're getting a response that looks like this, 
you have to have that single zero coming in, breaking up. That's how that's, remember the S term, breaking up. You need one of these pulls breaking, take it, taking it out. One of these pulls, will, one of these pulls will take it out. And then the next pull breaks you back down. I hope that's pretty easy to see for you. Single S term breaking you up. One of these pulls breaking you back to zero. Another pull then bringing you down. If you look at that, that's a band pass filter with a bandwidth here. And that's how you do it. You have two breaks. That L and that R give you one break, and that C and that R give you another break. Two separate time constants working there. And that concludes this lecture.